Hey guys, it's Angela, and I have finally found my way back to YouTube. It's not that I have been gone. I've still been watching videos. I just haven't been producing videos. But I have my new trusty computer so I can make as many videos as I want. And what better video to start off with than my December book haul featuring books that I've got for Christmas. Also featured in this video is going to be one of my favorite gifts that I got for Christmas. Are you guys ready? It is my New England Patriot cup and it is so gorgeous. I love it. I love it. So thank you to my sister because now I can show off my Patriot pride and we are going to win tomorrow against the Dolphins. Come on guys. We really need a win. I thought we were going to win against the Jets, but really, you're going to elect to defer in overtime? Great going, Patriots. Great going. I got quite a few books in December, so let's just jump right into this haul. First, let me go ahead and say that a lot of these books, the majority of these books, are thrift books. I'll know I'm all about that thrift book love. The first stack of books I have to show to you is coming from my trip to McKay's. It's a used bookstore in Nashville and it is amazing. It is just books are everywhere. If you have never been to McKay's or heard of it and live near Nashville, Tennessee, I really recommend you Google pictures because I was in heaven. My sister and I went to Nashville on December 13th for the Drew Lynch comedy show. And if you have never heard of Drew Lynch, please YouTube him when you are done watching this video. He has his own channel and he does vlogs with his dog. He was also on America's Got Talent. He got second place, but he is hilarious. But on the road to Nashville, I knew there was a bookstore somewhere. I just couldn't remember where or the name of it. But it turns out it is McKay's, and I got 11 books from there. The first book I got from McKay's is Barefoot by Ellen Hildebrand. I have never read anything by her, but a lot of people on BookTube really seem to like her. And so I looked and saw what was the first book in a series or what book had a lot of recommendations, and this popped up on Goodreads. From what I understand, Barefoot follows three three friends that are all leading their own lives and they decide to go to Nantucket one summer just to get away from everything until a young man stumbles into their life and how things progress from there. Like I said, I've never read anything by Ellen Hildebrand, but I'm really anxious to give this a go. The next thing I picked up is Rogue Angel Destiny by Alex Archer. This follows the story of Anja Creed, who is an archaeologist and discovers something in the caves of France. And that is all I really recall about this book. It says at the very end that she must survive the shadow figures determined to silence her threat to their existence. And she's racing across Europe. So it sounded pretty good. I originally picked up the third book in this series and read the back of that. And that seemed really interesting. But I can't just jump into a series straight away. So I had to pick this one up instead. But it still seems really good. The next thing I picked up was Of Mask and Mars by Christopher Golden. This follows the story of shadows and vampires, which are essentially the same thing. The shadows are a faction of the vampires that are led by Peter Octavian, and they must drink blood to survive, but they don't kill people. And new shadows are only created by individual choice, and all they really want out of life is peace. Whereas on the other hand, you have the vampires that are led by Hannibal, who are hungry for blood and death and human enslavement. And this, from what I understand, is the story of the two coming head to head and duking it all out. The next thing I got was In the Woods by Tana French. This is an Edgar Award winner, and it is also a psychological thriller, which I am super excited about. In the Woods follows the story of three children who go playing in the woods surrounding their Dublin homes. And when their mothers call them back, no one comes. But hours later, the police arrive and they find one boy who is clinging to a tree with blood-filled shoes, and they have not found the other two children. Fast forward 20 years later, and Rob and his partner Cassie must work to solve the homicide of a 12-year-old girl that occurred in the same woods. This book sounds super intriguing, but I do see one problem with it already. The fact that it is set in Dublin is going to have me reading in an Irish accent through the whole book. 
Does anyone else ever do that? You hear a book, it's set somewhere foreign, and you kind of read in the accent? Yeah, I do that all the time. Don't judge me. Then I picked up Cockroaches by Joe Nesbo. I listened to The Bat on audiobook earlier this year, and I really enjoyed it. I enjoyed the main character, Harry Hole, and I enjoyed the setting of Australia and the way that Joe Nesbro writes, so I decided I would go ahead and pick up the second book in the Harry Hole detective series. And in this one, Harry travels to Thailand to look into the murder of Norway's ambassador to Thailand. Next up, we have Dark Places by Gillian Flynn. I have only read Gone Girl by Gillian Flynn, and I absolutely loved it. So I've been on the hunt for her other books for quite some time now. And I could not find sharp objects, but I decided this one would do. This one follows the story of Libby, who was seven years old when her mother and two sisters were murdered, and she testified that her 15-year-old brother did it. 25 years later, this society approaches Libby to go over all the details of what happened that night. They want to find some sort of proof that her brother may be innocent, and Libby agrees to help them, but at a fee. So Libby returns home only to unknowingly place herself in reach of a killer yet again. And I foresee myself reading this book very, very soon. The next thing I picked up was Murder Below Montparnasse by Kara Black. This book is going to be highly interesting because I cannot speak a lick of French. And yeah, I probably butchered that name already. The story follows a woman named Amy who has been hired by this Russian man to protect a painting. However, the man is murdered and the painting is stolen and she must figure out what is so special about this painting and who could have killed this man. Shortly before he dies, he implies that he knows her mother who has been on Interpol's most wanted list for the past 20 years. And Amy must decide if her mother is in fact in Paris and is this man's murderer. The next thing I picked up is Act of War by Dale Brown. I know very little about this book. I know that it follows a 32-year-old army major named Jason Ritter as he is hunting down this group who is trying to put a stop to these organizations that are exploiting natural resources for monetary gain. I have, however, heard a few people talk about Dale Brown, and they all seem to really like him. And this was the first book in the series, so I decided I would give it a go myself. Next up, we have Someday, Someday, Maybe by Lauren Graham, a.k.a. Lorelai from The Gilmore Girls. I saw someone at McKay's pull this out on the shelf, and they said they really enjoyed it, and then they walked away and just left it there, so I grabbed it up. I have heard very little about this book. I know that it's about a woman named Franny who lives in New York and is trying to make it big as an actress there, I believe, but things don't always go to plan. I am just more anxious to read a novel by Lauren Graham and see if I enjoy her writing. Shortly down the aisle from Someday Someday Maybe, we found Choke by Chuck Palahniuk, and I was actually looking for a fight club, but they did not have it. I pulled this out because the cover intrigued me and I really liked the description on the back. It is about a man named Victor who goes around to all these various restaurants pretending to choke on his food. And the way that he makes his living is by getting checks from the people that help him out after he chokes, which sounds amazing. This guy just sounds like such a total tool and I cannot wait to read this. This will be my first Chuck Palahniuk book. So if I like this, I'm hoping to pick up Fight Club and read it this year. And the last book that I have picked up from McKay's, which I have been searching for for quite some time, is The Name of the Wind by Patrick Rothfuss. I have heard so many people talking about this on BookTube, and they all say that it is an amazing fantasy series. This follows the story of a man's life. That is all I know about it and all I want to know about it. I only wish that my copy was not as beat up as it is. I wish I had the bigger copy, the floppier copy, but that is okay because I found this for super cheap at McKay's and I'm just excited to have it so now I can read it. So while we were in Nashville, we went to Books A Million because my sister was looking for a Christmas present for me, of course, um, and I realized that I only got 11 books from McKay's and I just wanted one more if I found one 
to even it out and make it 12 and what do you know I did find one on the bargain rack and it would be landline by rainbow rowell if you have been around booktube for a while you have probably already heard of this book this novel follows the story of Georgie McCool as she and her husband Neil have separated for the holidays but not in the separation that you're all thinking she has stayed behind to work and he has gone to see his mother with their children in Omaha and while they're apart Georgie is able to contact Neil from a magical telephone in her room where she gets to speak to the Neil of 15 years ago. I have already read this book and I did enjoy it. I gave it a four out of five stars. The only slight criticism I had was that I wish it would have had a little bit of Neil's perspective in the book and that would have made the story just a little bit better for me personally. And the last book that I got for me was when I was shopping for my sister for Christmas on Book Depository, my finger kind of slipped over a book that I have been eyeballing for quite some time. I have been waiting for my library to lend me out this book, The Man in the High Castle by Philip K. Dick for quite some time. And I saw it when I was shopping for her. I got her um, an edition of The Princess Bride, which is her favorite movie. And I got this for myself. And yeah, this was my first book depository purchase. I'm really happy with the covers on the books and the bookmarks, of course. I have already read this book, and this is also a show on Amazon. It is about what would have happened if Japan and Germany won World War II. The United States of America has been split up with Nazi Germany controlling much of the East Coast, Japan along the Pacific Coast, and in the Rocky Mountains there is a denutralized zone where the man in the high castle lives. It is the author of a popular book that has been spreading like wildfire, The Grasshopper Lies Heavy, which the Germans have already banned as propaganda. And all of the characters that Philip K. Dick chooses to focus on have some connection back to each other or back to this book, and it was really interesting. I enjoyed most of the points of view in this book. There were a few that I couldn't quite get into, and the writing style took just a little bit for me to really immerse myself in, but overall I did enjoy it. I just was not particularly crazy about the end. I really recommend you read it for yourself and decide if you like it or not, but if you like an ending that gives you closure and wraps everything up neat and tidy in a little bow, this is definitely not the book for you, and that is one of the reasons that I had to dock it down a couple of points. The last set of books I have to show you guys, I was lucky enough to receive as Christmas gifts. My parents decided to give me a budget on books and just let me pick out my own books. So of course I went to thrift books and just got a little crazy. I have one coming in the mail because they forgot it in my order, but I can show you what I did get. The first four books I got because I was looking for things like Karen Marie Monning's Fever series and I read about them and decided to give them a go. The first one is Mind Games by Carolyn Crane, and it follows the story of Justine, who is a hypochondriac. Justine believes that a blood vessel is going to rupture in her head, and one day she meets this guy named Packard who looks into her soul and decides to invite her to join his crime-fighting team. Here, Justine can weaponize her neurosis and turn it outward to fight the villains of Mid-City. However, things aren't always as easy as they seem, especially in the world of books. While Justine is in this crime-fighting organization, there is a dashing police chief with powers of his own. Justine is plunged further into this world of wizardry and cosmic secrets, and soon discovers that the madness she thought she escaped from in her own head can be ten times worse in the real world. The next book is The Scent of Shadows, The First Sign of the Zodiac by Vicki Peterson. This follows the story of Joanna Archer, who was assaulted and left for dead in the Nevada desert when she was 16 years old, only she didn't die. And now she roams Las Vegas at night where there is a brutal power struggle between light and shadows and as she tries to uncover who or what she is. Next up, we have Unholy Ghost by Stasica Crane. This follows the story of Chess, 
who is a witch and ghost hunter in this world where the dead have come back to haunt the living. The Church of Real Truth has taken over for the government in this book and they promise all the citizens that are being harassed by the dead that they will be reimbursed. And Chess is one of the best fighters that the living have on their side. But as usual, she is harboring a secret. She owes a lot of money to this drug lord who wants immediate repayment in this dangerous job that involves black magic, human sacrifice, demonic creatures, and a lot of wicked energy. Next up, we have The Shadow Reader by Sandy Williams. This is a story of Mackenzie, who's a college student that works for the Fey King, hunting down rebels that are looking to overtake the realm. However, she is captured by Aaron, the leader of these rebels, and learns the truth about what's really going on in the kingdom and must decide whose side she's really on. This seems like a really interesting urban fantasy right along the lines of Karen Marie Monning's Fever series, and I cannot wait to read this one and the other three I have showed you so far. Next up, we have The Next Always by Nora Roberts. I know very little about this book. I just heard Hope from Hope Ortego rave about it and decided I wanted to pick it up and give it a go myself. Next up, we have a book that a lot of you have probably already heard of, and that is The Boy in the Striped Pajamas by John Boyne. This follows the story of a nine-year-old boy named Bruno who strikes up a friendship with a, another child that is a prisoner, I'm assuming, in a Nazi camp. And that is really all that I know about this book, but it is set during World War II, and as we have discussed countless times on this channel and in this video, World War II is right up my alley, and it just seems like something that I'm going to greatly, greatly enjoy. The next two books come from a booktuber recommendation video on contemporary romance, and I was really obsessed with reading contemporary romance in November. I just can't remember whose channel I saw these two books featured on, but the first book we have is On Dublin Street by Samantha Young, but they did say that this was the best one in Samantha Young's series, even though they recommended the entire series. And the second one is Disarm by June Grey. It is some sort of military romance, and that is pretty much all I know. I know that I have not read military romances, so I am really looking forward to reading this one. A while back, I hauled a Sarah Dessen book and said that it was my first Sarah Dessen novel, and one of you lovely viewers, and I'm so sorry, I don't remember your name, commented down below on a Sarah Dessen book that she really recommended, so I decided to pick it up, and that would be Dreamland. She said it was really interesting and a little bit different than what Sarah Dessen usually writes. It was a little darker, so if you're watching this video, thank you so much for the recommendation. I am so sorry I did not look up your name before I started this video, but I really can't wait to read this book and see if I like it. In all the books that I picked out for my parents to get me for Christmas, I stayed away from sequels except these next two books. I have the first one and the second one because Leslie from Treehouse Road raves about this series and I trust her opinion. So I went ahead and picked up Born Wicked by Jessica Spotswood and I also got the second one which is Star Curse. I did not pick up the third because I was already at my book limit, but I really cannot wait to read this series. It is about witches, and that is all I know, but she seems really passionate when she talks about the series, so I decided to pick them up. The next book that I picked up is The Diviners by Libra Bray. I originally wanted Beauty Queens, but it sat in my cart for two days, and someone snatched it right out from under my nose. You guys, that is so rude. Isn't that rude when you go and buy a book and it's not there anymore? But anyway, I have heard a lot of people talk about The Diviners, and I don't really know what it's about. I know my book did not come with a dust jacket, but that's okay because thrifty books need love too, guys. And I'm really excited with these books. If I can give them a good home and read a good story, then it is all worth it in the end. Next up, we have The Lives of Locke Lamora by Scott Lynch, which I know numerous people on BookTube have read and raved about, and I have been wanting this book for quite some time, so I decided to pick it up. 
I know that it is blurbed by George R. R. Martin, and when I saw that, I was thinking, George R. R. Martin, stop freaking blurbing books and go back to writing your book so that it can come out this year and not in, you know, 2017. But this is the story of an orphan named Locke Lamora who works his way to becoming a thief and the eventual leader of the Gentleman Bastards. And that is all I know about this book. I've heard Samantha from Novels and Nonsense talk about it, and she seemed to enjoy it, so I cannot wait to pick it up because I usually trust her opinions. Next book is Miss Born by Brandon Sanderson. I have never read a Brandon Sanderson book, and I decided to start with the beginning, even though I do believe I own Steelheart, which is his YA. This one, a lot of people seem to love, and I cannot wait to read it. I should have started last year with The Year of Cosmere, but hey, I missed out on that bandwagon. Go figure. The next two books that I picked out from my parents for Christmas are contemporary romance novels. Go figure. I couldn't resist throwing in some of those in this haul. And the first one is Turn Up the Heat by Kimberly Kincaid. And this follows the story of Bellamy, who is just needing a break from life. So she decides to go on this adventure, but her car breaks down, leaving her stranded in a place with no cell phone reception and the hottest mechanic around. It seems really cute, and I cannot wait to read it. The next book is by one of my new favorite contemporary romance authors, and that would be Kristen Higgins. I discovered her in November, maybe the end of October. But this is one of my favorite books by her so far. It is called The Perfect Match, and it is the second book in a series. I did not know that. I did not read the first book yet. I have read books two, three, and four, and I think five just came out. This book follows Honor Holland, who works at her family's vineyard. She's always had a thing for this guy, but he tells her that he is engaged to her best friend. So Honor's understandably devastated. And then we have Tom Barlow, who is a British implant, and he's trying to do right by his stepson, Charlie, but his visa's about to expire. And what ensues is hilarious and sweet contemporary romance, and I love it. And I really recommend you pick this up. If you've read this series or the first one, let me know how it is, because I still haven't read it yet. But this book is pure magic. Pick it up, The Perfect Match by Kristen Higgins. And the last two books that my parents so kindly bought me for Christmas are two that go together, and I did hear them on someone's booktube channel. I just, again, don't remember who, but they are Wolf Hall and Bring Up the Bodies by Hilary Mantle. They follow the story of Thomas Cromwell, who lived in the King Henry VIII time period. I am not particularly crazy about that time period. Yes, it is interesting, and yes, the story of King Henry VIII is very interesting, but my sister is more the aficionado of that era. Um, but I just thought that they sounded really good. I don't remember who talked about them, but she just had so much passion when she talked about them, and I really wanted to give them a go. And if worse comes to worse, I can always just give them to my sister. And speaking of my lovely kind sister, she got me two books for Christmas, and I am so excited about both of them. I know I've said that over and over in this video. Let's just put a little tally on the side of how many times I say excited, can't wait to read it, etc., etc. The most common used phrases. But the two books she got me, I had been wanting to read for a really long time. And I have not bought a brand new book in quite some time, but she was kind enough to do it for me. And she got me Snow Like Ashes by Sarah Rosh, which I'm pretty sure all of you know what this is about. And the next book that she got me is Wolf by Wolf by Ryan Grodin. Motorcycles, Hitler. Yes. Okay. I am reading this book, you guys. I am super excited. I was really spoiled by my family this Christmas, and I am so thankful for them. And that is all the books that I have to show you guys today. I hope you guys had a great Christmas or holiday season and a really happy new year. All the best of luck to you guys, and I cannot wait to see you in the next video. Bye!